Welcome back. School started for many last week and for still more the day after tomorrow. And it comes with so many questions and debates swirling about masks and in-person learning. And it also comes on the heels of new test results that show us, perhaps unsurprisingly, students are struggling with the new schoolhouse. It is very good to have with us the incoming president and CEO of the Skillman Foundation, Angelique Power. Angelique, it's our first chance to talk to you on the program. Welcome to Flashpoint, and I should also say welcome to Detroit. Thank you, Devin. I'm so happy to be here with you in particular. Well, I, I'm, I'm curious if, <laughs> to be the head of a foundation that is right now uh, so focused, of course, solely focused on educating children. You come to this job at a really extraordinary time. That's got to be a daunting task in front of you. It's an incredible opportunity. This is a moment we're coming off of a year and a half where collectively we understand that this has been a traumatic year, that we've been adjunct faculty in our children's lives, yes. helping to educate them. We understand how hard teachers work, and we know that mental health and well being has to be at the center of any sort of education plan and recovery. So, to work with Skillman, a group of thoughtful warriors, champions of children, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I, I like the way you're looking at it. I also like the way you're looking at parents as being adjunct faculty, that's, that's for sure. And that's a role for which many uh, didn't believe that they were uh, necessarily prepared. And now moving into another year, it was one thing moving into a year when we didn't know what to expect. I think a lot of parents are worried about the year ahead because they do know what last year was like. Well, and I'm a parent. Yeah. I have an 11 year old daughter who's going into sixth grade. And what we know is that the year ahead isn't gonna be like the one two years ago, and it's not gonna be like the one that we just emerged from. You know, our teachers have put so much thought and administrators and effort into changing their pedagogy and figuring out how do you teach fully remotely? How do you teach in a hybridized fashion? And now they are better equipped to come into the classrooms and to begin to work together in a new way. So I think children and youth are longing to be together in yeah. spaces. Yes. There's so much that you learn in school that is beyond the curriculum. So I think we have a year ahead where there's going to be a lot of um, the life lessons that were learned over the last year and a half that will be brought into the schoolroom. We're all looking a lot at these uh, recent test results that showed the, uh, while there were some uh, gains in some areas, for the most part, students uh, not doing as well as before on the test. I, I think that you're also mindful, though, that not as many people took the test this time around, right? Thank you for mentioning that. And I think any principal or any teacher will tell you that this was, for the most part, an optional test. Um, it was framed that way, and so a small percentage of students opted in to take a test. So that is the first thing to lift. The second thing I would say is that um, what you were testing is if this curriculum that is normally taught in person in a completely different way landed when it was taught remotely or in a hybrid model in a completely different way. And so what you're comparing is really more about what are the supports that youth need coming back into school. It's not an indictment on how the students are learning or what they've learned. It really is a jumping off point to use to say, okay, we need to wrap students with this type of support, that type of support, yeah. et cetera. It would be the least surprising thing, though, to me to find that children are struggling to learn in this new sort of world. Uh, and I wonder, though, how much of it has to do with uh, the nuts and bolts of learning and how much of it goes back to what you were talking about a while ago, and that's their mental fitness and their, their, their sort of uh, psycho psychological outlook right now. They're surrounded by parents and by social media right now that is a lot of gloom and doom. They know that they're living at a time uh, that is very challenging. They're worried about their hearing and seeing the arguments over masks. I mean, uh, this is a really difficult environment in which to try to buckle down and learn, isn't it? It is. You know, there are staff at Skillman. I remember a staff member said to me this summer, um, Carmen is her name, and she said she was a principal before she became a program uh, officer at Skillman. And she said, when, when students come in the door, and they have their backpacks on their shoulders, 
they're carrying so many things with them into that classroom. And so I think it's more apparent to us now that there's a lot of hurt and trauma and grief and loss yeah. that children are carrying into the classroom, but it has been happening for a very long period of time. You know, the school day is such an opportunity for us to learn together how to take this collective trauma that we have, not just as students, but also teachers and administrators and work together to learn in, a, in an environment that's nourishing as well as challenging. Um, so yes, I think that there are students that are coming in after a really difficult year, um, but I think that the space to create rapid, massive change is the classroom if we provide enough supports and resources to help teachers get there. Which gets me to the, the last thing I wanted to talk about. I'm really curious as to how you feel. We have always believed that one size does not fit all in American education. We believe in local control. And yet what that does is it creates this huge patchwork quilt in which uh, we don't have a unified response right now when it comes to masks or vaccines. Is that the beauty of American education or is that hurting us right now in your view? You know, I would boil it down to an approach to a child. There is no one size fits all approach to every child that has to be customized. That said, having standards and having a rigorous collective approach is critical. You know, you're making me think of this effort that is underway right now called Launch Michigan. And it is a group of business leaders and policymakers and teachers right. and superintendents and you know um, community leaders who are coming together thinking through the American Rescue Plan Act, the dollars that are coming in, the tremendous needs that have been emerging since the pandemic and before. And they're making a collective plan that ideally allows for customization, but puts us all on the same course to really put kids first. We're in the middle of such an interesting laboratory right now, and that's another part of it. You're exactly right. Angelique, great to have this conversation with you. I hope it's uh, the first of many on Flashpoint. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Devin. You bet. We come back, some reflections on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. This is Flashpoint on Local 4.